What's up, everybody? Uh, real quick, just wanted to say thanks for the support on the previous version of What's in My Camera Collection, the Nikon edition. And by request from you guys in the comments, this is the Canon version. Also, Ramon in the Netherlands pointed out that I forgot the Nikon S1 in that video, and it is true. I did, in fact, forget this camera right here. But yeah, having said that, let's take a look at the Canon collection. Well, the very first camera worth mentioning is the Canon 1D. The 1D kind of represents like everything that this channel was about. You know, it's a very professional camera that was very expensive at the time that it came out, but nowadays it's actually very affordable. I mean, the last I checked, they were selling for around $100 each, and that's pretty impressive. You know, the 1D has that CCD sensor, and it just looks absolutely amazing. I remember I got mine back in 2012 from KEH. I paid like 475 bucks for it at the time, but uh, I remember that first day, like I took this out to the pool as me and my friend Aida, and I took a few pictures, and I just remember stopping, looking at those images and thinking, man, that just looks so different. Like really look at that image, look at those blue tones, like in the jacket and stuff. It handles colors so differently from any other Canon camera, and right away, I was hooked on the 1D, which brings us to the next camera the Canon 1DS. The 1DS is basically the exact same body as the 1D. There's literally no differences. The only catch is the 1D is a four megapixel crop sensor, whereas the 1DS is an 11.1 .1 megapixel full frame sensor. Uh, I got mine three years ago. I paid around $180. When you consider that you're getting this very professional, fully weather sealed magnesium alloy body camera, that's also full frame and it's under $200. That's absolutely insane. The next camera is the Canon 60D. I got this camera on Black Friday in 2011, paid $1,100 at the time. I got the Canon 60D and the 18 to 135 millimeter kit lens. Uh, I had always wanted the 5D Mark II, but I just didn't have enough money and so, <laughs> When that special came around, that was I pretty much jumped on that. That was like all I could afford. But I gotta say, man, the 60D with that 18 to 135 lens is such a good setup. I ended up taking this with me everywhere in that time period. I would go to the beach every day with friends and we would just always take pictures with that camera. And I love those images. Those are some of my favorite images that I've ever taken. Or like there was this time when uh, Sophie and I were walking around at the beach and these drunk people invited us onto their yacht, like literally just out of nowhere invited us like, hey, come on board. And so we ran up there onto the boat and they just gave us free reign. You know, we, we walked around from place to place. We took so many pictures that day. The 60D, man, that camera just never disappoints. And of course there's also a Canon 70D for me personally, the 70D was always kind of a video camera. I never really took a whole lot of pictures with it. That very first year of this YouTube channel, that entire thing was filmed on the Canon 70D with the Canon 17 to 55 millimeter f2.8 lens. Talk about a good combo. I really, really enjoyed that. 70D is actually a pretty decent hybrid camera. There's no higher frame rates, but you do have 1080p and 24 and 30 frames per second. Uh, still a pretty good camera these days. I've got some older cameras too, like this Canon D30. D30 is one of those cameras, I bought this about like six or seven years ago, just kind of as a novelty. I paid 30 bucks for it back then. I can't imagine they're that expensive nowadays. 30D is a pretty good camera and it was a nice precursor to the XXD line. Speaking of which, I have a Canon 10D, a Canon 20D, a Canon 30D, and a Canon 40D. With everything from the 10D to the 40D, a lot of those cameras were just kind of used as like backup cameras. I never really did like photo shoots or client work with those, so it's not a whole lot of sample photos. You know, I was digging around through these old hard drives and <laughs> it's not a ton of images from those cameras, but having said that, they are still great cameras. You know, I really do like all of those. They're, they're really well made. You know, they're magnesium alloy. They're super sturdy. They're just, um, as a camera collector with so many to choose from, I ended up just not using those that much, but I do like them. 
I've got a few random cameras too. You know, I've got a Canon KISS digital. That's the Japanese version that I have. Um, in America, it was the first digital Rebel. In Europe, I think it was called the 300D. It's one of those cameras where I'm not crazy about the build quality. It has a metal frame, but it's like super plasticky on the outside. But that was pretty common back then with those older, especially like entry level cameras. Uh, there's also a Canon 100D. Uh, I got the British version because I got it from MPB, but in America, that's the SL1. The 100D is a pretty surprisingly good hybrid camera. It does great photos. It does great video at 1080p anyway. The autofocus is okay though. Uh, there's also a Canon S100. This is one of the best little compact point and shoot cameras that I've ever had. Cause it does great photos, but it also does great 1080p video. And the S100 actually has like true Canon colors. Color science on that little camera is actually really amazing. There's also a few Canon M series cameras. I got the Canon M6. And some of you guys that are subscribed, you probably remember that's the camera that got destroyed in the tsunami at the beach two years ago. I loved that camera so much that I actually went out and bought yet another Canon M6. Um, it's this white one here. I think that's the European version. I don't remember them ever selling a white Canon M6 here in America. I don't know, let me know in the comments. There's also the Canon M50. A lot of this channel in the past two years has been filmed on the M50. Usually that with like either a Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 lens or usually I've got two Viltrox lenses too. Thanks. Thank you Viltrox for always helping out this channel. But um, yeah, I usually film with that Viltrox 24 1.4 or that other 56 millimeter 1.4. Both of those have been like really huge in terms of filming videos with this channel. Oh, uh, hang on. This is me from the future. I just realized that I forgot to mention the Canon EOS M, the original M. Uh, this came out in like 2012, I think it was six or 700 bucks. And I got mine a year later in 2013 and the price had already gone down to like $200 brand new, which kind of shows like how popular this camera was not. <laughs> but yeah, I really love the EOS M. Aida and I would take this camera to the beach all the time just because it's so small, especially like a lot of times I was using it with that little 22 millimeter F 2.0 lens. I mean, that lens with this camera is almost pocketable pretty much. But um, I got a lot of good pictures out of that setup, just that little 22 millimeter lens. And also I did a few pictures, hang on. And also I did like a decent amount of pictures too using adapted lenses, oh boy. <laughs> I did a decent amount of pictures with adapted lenses too, but I didn't do that that often. I'm gonna pretend like there's not a cat here. This is why I don't usually film indoors by the way. Um, but yeah, uh, EOS M, uh, the original one, the autofocus wasn't particularly good for both photo and video, but in terms of the actual image quality from photo and video, uh, EOS M was actually really solid. Okay. Anyway, now back to the video. And that brings us to two of my all time favorite Canon cameras. First one is the 5D classic. I bought this like, uh, probably a year or two ago just for like reviewing on this channel. I kind of thought I was buying it like just for the novelty. Hold on, let's go this way. I kind of thought I was buying it just for like the novelty of having like an older Canon full frame camera. And I was just blown away by how much I actually love this camera. You know, the 5D Classic just has such different color science from any other camera. It's kind of like how the 1D is like way different. The 5D Classic is also totally different, you know? I'm, uh, you know, I'm trying to learn to stop complaining about this, but in a world where young people compare everything to film, I saw a video the other day where someone literally was talking about how this camera looks just like film. And I'm like, oh man, it had like 200,000 views. I'm like, oh boy, what is it? It was a fucking Canon G7X Mark II. I literally like, I nearly threw my phone at the TV when I saw that, but anyway, um, the 5D Classic just looks so different. You know, when I started like walking around and just taking pictures with that camera, I was just so surprised by like how soothing those color tones are. It just does not look like any other Canon camera. 
The 5D Classic just, it's in a class of its own, man. Like, if you were saving up your money to get some kind of older Canon camera, that is one of the cameras that I would keep my eye on. And of course, I think probably one of my all-time favorite Canon cameras is the 5D Mark II. 5D Mark II, like I mentioned, was just one of those cameras that I wanted so bad, but I never had enough money for it. And then once I finally got the 5D Mark II, I got mine in 2012, and I think I paid about $1,700 at that time. That's the most ever excited I've ever been to finally like buy a camera. And it didn't disappoint. Like the 5D Mark II started coming with me everywhere I went back then. You know, every single photo shoot, my main camera was the 5D Mark II. I was bringing that with me everywhere. And when I start looking back through all these files, it's like so many of my all time favorite images that I've ever taken were all taken on the 5D Mark II. Plus the 5D Mark II just changed things for me so much in that I've always liked video, but up till that point, there were no really good options for regular people filming video. You know, you've got to remember back then what YouTube videos look like. Most people were just like sitting in their bedroom and filming on a webcam on their computer. Either that or they were using like literally like a dad cam style like camcorder. The 5D Mark II just sort of revolutionized everything where nowadays people could film like genuinely good looking professional video on their own without having crazy expensive like cinema equipment. You know, the 5D Mark II was one of those cameras that kind of inspired me to want to start doing YouTube videos because I realized the just the possibilities. Like instead of having like great looking pictures with really ugly footage, you could have great pictures and really good looking footage too. I mean, that was just crazy. It's something that we completely take for granted nowadays, but back then, you know, you gotta remember that was pretty revolutionary. But yeah, that's basically all the Canon cameras I have. Oh, and real quick before I go, I wanna say uh, my friend Donnie, uh, there's his Instagram right there. He started a YouTube channel. I'll have him linked in the end cards that are about to come up in like two seconds. Uh, anyway, I think that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.